and uh, keep doing the good work. It's have getting a, through to the to everyone. Have a good night, man. So I think that's my first accurate guess on stream, but pretty cool. Elfin, what's up? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thanks okay. for calling in. I'm another Scorpio. Sausage fest. Um, so I'm a Scorpio as well. Um, I'm also an astrologer. Cool. Uh, flat Earth. Um, nice. But I wanted to, because I haven't shared this with too many people. Um, I am an independent researcher, and I've been working with circuitry, um, both the circuitry in the sky, which is astrology and then studying these ancient structures. Um, and I decided to kind of do a combination of looking at these star forts and these ancient buildings and correlating them with the sky. And so, as you know, like the ley lines, um, basically what I did was I took all the star forts in the U.S. and I connected the ley lines and found a sacred geometry Ooh. with all of them and each star four correlates with a constellation so basically these things are a planetary grid and i don't mean like outer space uh but i mean like in the sky you know like angel yeah. tech technology um so i'm putting together a bit of a video to explain just the ones in the US and basically, you know, the mythology of these constellations that are constantly pretty much stationary, you know? Um, and I just thought that would be very interesting to push the astrology movement basically in this direction, you know, where we're, yeah. we're, li we're light coding, you know, we're not just Absolutely. analyzing. Yeah. Absolutely, I agree with you astro archaeology is the key you know <laughs> digging in the dirt yeah. is ass backwards mm -hmm. we should be looking up at the, the stars yeah and we actually have a star cell in our brain called an astro site and it looks a lot like these star forts like you know how they have this kind of cell looking star in the center and then it has another star and then another star well, that star in the center of a lot of these mimic the star cell in our brain called an astrocyte. And these are astrocytes. <laughs> it's wow. very, very, astro yeah. Astrocyte, right. So I wanted to uh, just kind of share that with you because it's not really talked about. And I, I, I'm constantly listening to these videos and like, you know, I know all this stuff and I'm trying to put it out there, but it's so mind blowing and it's so much research for one person to calculate every star for in this realm. But I think if we all came together and maybe, you know, you pick parts where you're from and, you know, we have people from all over calculating these with the latitude and the longitude, we'd be able to kind of get more of an idea of the that the high technology that this is, you know, as above, so below correlating with, because it's definitely correlating with the planetary grid, not just like the water. I think it was the water because we were in the age of water. Now we're in the age of air, right? Aquarius, the air. And they're using that to their advantage by polluting the air more and like, you know, I can't breathe and the masks and all this stuff. So if we were to flip it in the positive aspects of astrology, there's so much we could do. I'm not saying we could create these things, but we would know a bit more about how they were built. What's everyone's dream? You know what? That's a good point. I'd like to demonstrate this. You know, when I'm 26 or like, 20, 30 year olds, when I was growing up, you know, when people ask, like, make a wish, if you could make a wish, any wish, and it could come true. Mm -hmm. It's almost, you know, you know how many people answer, I wish I could fly. Yeah. Right? 
Well, you I can. Bet <laughs> I bet in the 2000 years before this, if you ask people, they'd say, I wish I could breathe underwater. Yeah. Pisces. Wow. Because everyone was traveling, right. afraid of um, drowning. You know, all the travel was done by, by sea. Yeah. Now it's the age of Aquarius. Everyone's like, I want to fly. Uh, like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And like the whole astrophysics and science. So, like, I kind of wanted to mention that because I'm not by any means into astrophysics. Um, but I started studying circuitry and it kind of all started when I went back to my near death experience in 2007. I died in, yeah, so I, like, I literally died. I was pronounced dead and um, I was revived and I had a very spiritual experience and I basically left this construct through a, what I call a black channel or a black tube. And I was sucked in, not my mind, body and organism, but my, my immortal soul. And I, went through a disc like shape above the dome. And then I went into what I believe is Polaris because it was in the center, you know, it was North. It was our North star. Mm -hmm. And I remember being there. Like I, I remember that being the place I was at before I was born. Um, and after that, my life totally changed up. Like, couldn't eat the same foods and my taste, my vision, my dreams, my life was just like on a constant flow of, of energy. And I had downloaded a lot of information when I came back into my body. Uh -huh. And I started researching this stuff and all this stuff I started researching. I had already knew from my higher self that left this construct. So now let's back it up to six months ago. I was like, I want to feel that again. It's been so long, you know, and there's so much intense energies. And I wanted to just go back to that feeling of being one outside the construct and my higher self. And I went into uh, meditation. I did some breathing exercises and I did this every day for a week. And finally I went back to that place. And when I did, I downloaded so much information on circuitry, like from nowhere. I do not study computer science. And I basically um, took the 27 main uh, constellations, which you know we have more than that, but they like to focus on the 27. Mm -hmm. As you know, in astrology and Vedic astrology, they use the 27 as well. So I decoded them on a motherboard correlating with all the technology counter um, parts to a motherboard. And I broke them down with the archons. And it's very, very intense wow. stuff. So like, you know, like the RAM you have mm -hmm. is Aries. And then you have the CPU, which wow. is the central processing unit, which would be the sun. And then on a motherboard, right on the side, you have the GPU, and that's a graphic, uh, graph, you know, graphic unit that would be the moon. You know, the moon mm. only ever seen one side to it. You know, it's such a mystery, but they work together. They work, you know, hot and cold. That po polarity of, you know, masculine and feminine. And so I decoded more than twenty-seven. Um, and it's just mind blowing. Like, I'll give you one. Okay, I'll give you one. Uh, a s Pluto. Okay. What would be Pluto in a motherboard? Pluto is obsolete. We don't really use it that much. It's very small. Think mm -hmm. of Disney Pluto with the floppy ears. Mm -hmm. You know, Pluto, Pluto the dog. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very obsolete. And if you check the elements of these, these archons, you know, they NASA says, oh, this is made out of lead and copper. And when you look at my decode, each one of these are made of exactly of the same element and they're all overlapping in the sky. Our technology comes from the sky. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
She kind of blew my mind, man. It all kind of came together. I'm so amped up to share. This is just so fascinating, and I've been like holding it inside. Um, wow. I can pull up a psalm on my decode. So now we have a operating system. Our operating system is Windows. Windows is the sky. Now we have two operating systems the supposed elites, well, the puppets that they show us, we don't really know who the real ones are, but they use Linux. They are outside of the matrix using Linux because when you're on Windows, you're inside this matrix system. So there's two operating systems, and then we got the CPU, the sun, the GPU, the moon, SATA, S-A-T-A, -A, Saturn, of course. It's made of lead, it's alchemy is lead, both mm. of them. TPU is called the cloud. There's the clouds. PCI is the PCI slot. That's Pisces. And it's most common oh. way to attach cool. on a controller card or any other devices to a computer and motherboard. So these things mimic. If you know astrology and you look into computer science, but you fuck, fuck all the astrophysics stuff and you get right down to the the actual astrology, you will decode this. That's why they have it trained so these people don't know shit about astrology. Mm. So then I have the AGP slot, which is Aquarius, and it's both near Pisces and astrology. And we have the northern bridge on a circuit, and that's Polaris. Polaris mm. is north and also is Vega. But uh so then I have the South Bridge, which is the cross constellation, right? And then you got the Ram, which is Aries. And then you got the SCSI slot. It's uh, S-C-S-I. That's Scorpio. Oh, yes. Scorpio. Yeah, right? And then you got CMOS, which is Mercury. And it's literally made out of Mercury, this, this, this counterpart. Oh. Uh -huh. VRM is Virgo. Serial port, spelled like serial killer. How many serial killers are Sagittarius? An awful lot of them. A lot. And, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then the parallel port, of course, is Gemini. It's in the Northern Hemisphere. And it's also in charge wow. of communication. Very good. Yeah, yeah, just for the Tower of Babel communication right under Gemini. Yeah, this stuff is no joke. I decoded this stuff within a couple weeks. <laughs> Are you naturally blonde? Who me or her? I can't see her. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm natural blonde. I do nice. different things with my hair. Um, but Those are smart. Thank you. So yeah, this stuff is just so mind blowing. Like I just because I've been into astrology since I was seven years old, you know, and I kind of got frustrated with it because you know we get pieces of truth, it's all mixed up, and we just get like the mundane, you know? We don't get the real science, and real science is questioning science. So I had finally found a combination of Western and Vedic, and when I did a combination of this, mm -hmm. it brought me to real science. And, you know, after that, I just got into like circuitry and cymatics and, you know, old Tartarian structures and just like this advance, you know, the whole world is basically a circuit as above, so below. And I, we are circuits too. <laughs> well, that's great. I would love to hear you talk about or get into the table of elements or DNA but, with astrology. Because what you're into right now, I think is untapped territory the um the, i don't even know that was all, all way over my head the circuit sorry guys yeah. you have to that's why i'm trying to make a video and i'm trying to explain it but then it's like how am i going to explain astrology and computer science and like, it's like i need a can team I, can i give one for the viewers um dna astrology is everything the building block Word of God, A G, sorry, A T G C, right? DNA, Aries, yeah. Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, A T G C. Also, book. also, we, got, mm -hmm. we also have four the elements, right? 
We have mm -hmm. four points to a compass and we have four fundamentally su uh, four sub root races. So we have the energy body, we have, you know, hyperborea, we have the lemuria, we have the, the, um, the, the Aryans, you know, so all these are part of our blood type. It's A, B, A, B, and RH negative, O negative. So these blood types are the, you know, survivors of the ancient people. And it's interesting how the eclipses we have mainly what four a year so it's very possible that the agenda right now is to create a new type of blood type or sub root race mm. and i am kind of curious if we're going to be seeing this or part of this you know uh, the battle the spiritual battle and i'm, I'm curious right <laughs> <laughs> Yes, man. You go down to you go down to Miami, you'll get a whole lot of homo and techno. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm curious to see if there's going to be a new sub root race of basically like I don't know what I can say on here uh, AI people, vaccinated yeah. <laughs> uh, people. Yeah, I kind of think it's all connected to the Archons and the return of the Nephilim. Um, but that's kind of a different topic. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's very interesting, the uh, blood types. And I'm RH negative, by the way. So it's probably nice. why I'm very connected to all this stuff. Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> Isn't RH negative like really rare? It's connected to blue bloods? Yes. Um, yes. And I'm very connected to Vega and Polaris. Um, You're connected to Vega? I'm very connected to Vega. I'm, I studied... Uh, That's a star. Uh, Vega. Yeah. Okay. It's in the constellation Lyra, which is the harp. Alpha Lyra, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's how they get the harp, you know, and mm -hmm. Jesus. And, yeah. <laughs> but and what, it's a uh, what significance does that star have? Vega's a truth star. Okay. Vegan, veganism. Yeah. Uh, walk the truth, you know, in harmony with nature. It's a, mm -hmm. you have Pleiadians, you know, you have like yeah. these Aryan style, higher dimensional beings. Lyrans yes. are high in that, in that. Um, and I well, have it in my astrology chart too. So I have the. My um, Jupiter is conjunct Vega. I wonder, I just started getting into the, because I was kind of against the star seed galactic stuff as a flat earther. Well, yes, so there's truth, <laughs> there's truth in everything. No, I totally get that. And I can be yeah. yeah. Materialists will hear good truth and, and tell it in its most material form. And, you know, people will experience the truth and only have a materialist lens or vocabulary. Right. So an angel from the sky or, yes. or a person who worships the stars mm -hmm. to a materialist in a game of telephone might end up being a person from the stars. So when people are having visions of blonde, Arctic, pre post-Atlantean, etheric yes. light bodies, like talking to them, and these are always the God, these are always the good aliens. The Aryans, yeah. the Aryan aliens, the good ones. Mm -hmm. Who are the bad ones? The reptilians, almost always. The ant, the insectoid looking ones, or the reptilians, those are the bad guys. And, you know. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're taking some of that DNA and doing some yes. bitches brewery with it. <laughs> um, now, long hair on this planet was worth, was one of the most valuable things on the planet only you know 500 years ago 300 years ago parts of china they would trade pounds of gold for a strand of blonde hair off of a you know a european woman mm -hmm. or whatever so they believed it had yeah. magical effect to yeah I <laughs> and yeah that makes sense i mean i'm i'm pretty much a vegan um i when I had my near-death experience in 2007, I became a vegetarian automatically. 
So you know how like a lot of people, they get inspired by, you know, channels and you know, just wonderful people. I actually had just got inspired by my near death experience that brought, brought me in, within my own inner church. And I just started to just fully activate it. It's almost like I had to die to reprogram my subconscious mind from, you know, I have Saturn and Sun and Moon. So, <laughs> um, you know, having the heavy load being born into that, it's like, it was a given gift to be able to die and, and rebirth myself. Um, so I've been on a very deep spiritual, and I just, that word is so overused, but you know what I mean? Um, well, I've hit, been living my truth. You had some keywords, Scorpio keywords, deep, rebirth, death and rebirth, deep. Scorpio. And I'm a Scorpio, so <laughs> yeah, I love Scorpio. Um, what day, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, Scorpio. Scorpio with Venus in first house and Mercury. So <laughs> I'm like. You won't tell me what day. I'm a different mix of a Scorpio, right? Um, I was going to ask you something about Vega. Um, sure. So Vega, you know, they tell us it's hot and, you know, whatever, it's a star. But I really feel it's cold. And I just have a theory on it because of where it's located, we have the ice wall and it's, it's you know, north, it's cold. And they say that Vega used to be our north and our north and star, our Polaris, and there was a shift. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I still believe in shifts can happen. Obviously, the sky is what's moving, and we're stationary. So it now it may have not happened the years they're telling us, and these things might not be twenty four light years away. They could be literally twenty four giant Titan giant steps away. You know what I mean? Like we don't really know what I studied was that Vega mimics the sun and it rises and sets like the sun. And I've been calling it the blue sun as a theory mm -hmm. that, you know, this thing is the cause of this coldness over there. It, it, and it kind of goes into the Disney movie frozen where, you know, uh, Elsa is this gorgeous, like you said, she's this gorgeous blonde, you know, ice princess, and she's stuck in the in an isolation, a kingdom of isolation, right? It's it just mimics Vega to me, and how everything she touches is cold, right? And then how she starts to sing, and when she's singing, these megalithic structures are being built with cymatics. It's frozen music and mm. water, and that really fits into you know, this old world history of how these things were possibly built. And I have a theory that, you know, the Geo Palmer, because it's liquid concrete, that they could have used some cymatics with Geo Palmer to build these structures. And then we had a pole shift and, and Vega switched from, you know, not too, too, too far, right? Because Polaris and Vega, they're both north. But they're right on the ley lines in the sky. And if you look, they they line up. So it's possible that a big conjunction could have caused a pole shift between the two. Hmm. And that's just my theory. I don't know if I'm right, but it's just something that I've been studying. I wanted to mention all the Twin Peak mountains all over this realm, the devil horns. When you look in between each one, look at the latitude and look at the longitude. They all face Vega. Some people that were advanced and very giant possibly were electric mining these things and they were keeping track of Vega. Hmm. That's why all the ancient astronomers and astrologers were obsessed with it. Well, you know, this is, this is all getting a little vague here. Could you tie it in? 